Hey, can you find a water bottle for me? Something so simple. Good afternoon, Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Thursday, June the 28th. While Diogenes would have had a hard time finding an honest man at the Arkansas legislature, it sometimes seems like. Another day, another corrupt legislator services. Today, Mickey Gates, a Republican from Hot Springs, turned himself in at the Garland County Jail on six felony charges of failing to pay income taxes for the last six years. The state says he owes at least $259,000. They only charge him with six felonies because he hadn't paid taxes since 2003, but the statute of limitations limits the number of felonies to only six years, so that's the most they can get him for. He's offered a variety of excuses for his past uh, exposure as a tax deadbeat. Oh, his accountant messed up, the auditor was against him, he didn't know, he thought somebody else was doing it. Well, he's going to get his day in court now. It's rare that the state prosecutes a state tax case. All of those of us who do pay our taxes kind of look at those who don't is uh, something akin to thieves. We don't know yet if he's been paying federal income taxes during this time. That might complicate situations for him. State corruption comes up at a good time. I mentioned yesterday before the news conference happened that Attorney General Leslie Rutledge had a plan to talk about public corruption. It was nothing but political grandstanding. She's going to hire a couple of people, she says, to be public corruption investigators. She doesn't really have anything to go on. She has no good answer about how the huge Medicaid fraud scandal unfolded under her nose when she has a Medicaid fraud task force. She says uh, she has no reason to apologize for defending the General Improvement Fund law under which other bribes and kicks back were paid. As far as she knew, the money was paid out legally. If other things happened after that, wasn't her fault. Well, the uh, Attorney General's got a lot of explaining to do. Needless to say, she didn't have anything to do with the prosecution of Mickey Gates. That was Special Prosecutor Jack McQuarrie's work. Rutledge also says she didn't have anything to do with these allegations of bribery over at the Medical Marijuana Commission either. Just what does she do? Goes after home health aides, I guess, who uh, cheap Medicaid out of a few hundred dollars and care for old and sick people. Well, I sound a little uh, bitter about some of this. <laughs> I guess perhaps I am. The big news yesterday happened after we taped. As you know, Anthony Kennedy announced his retirement from the U.S. Supreme court. This is terrible news. Perhaps not as terrible as it seemed. Kennedy was not a great member of the court. He was uh, ultra conservative in most, in most ways, but he was important on two very important issues, abortion and gay rights. Uh, he uh, joined a majority that, that preserved those things for a lot of people. I don't think there's much chance they'll survive under the, under the court that Donald Trump's likely to appoint. It's going to be very difficult for Democrats to stop an ultra-conservative, right-wing, anti-abortion, anti-gay appointment by Donald Trump, which uh, Trump has promised to do. So hunker down and do the best you can. Great story last night posted on the Arkansas blog by Benji Hardy about the apart, uh, Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality. You know, it's headed by a, a veteran of the regulated industry, of the hydrocarbon industry, Becky Keough, and she's a sister-in-law of the state Republican Party chairman, so you can figure they're not exactly going to be a progressive on the environmental front anyway. Well, we learned that Kelly Robinson, who'd been the press spokesman for the agency, was fired. Her offense was this. She failed to tell her bosses about a post on a public website about a rules change in which a former uh, employee of the agency talked about a dramatic drop in enforcement penalties by the agency under Keogh's leadership, a loss of veteran employees replaced by higher paid political hacks in the agency. Well, needless to say, the boss didn't like that much. She, she uses as an excuse that she wasn't informed of the post, but the post was taken down for a while too. They clearly felt uncomfortable about these kind of facts being exposed to the public. Well, Kelly Robinson has gone and business as usual convenient, continues the Department of Environmental Quality. They have any shame, we'll see in the future. I don't think it will uh, extend to tough environment environmental enforcement, however. Interesting story on Channel 11 last night. There's a series of arson fires in Cotton Plant, a bedraggled Delta town in Woodruff County that's been picked as the site of potentially of a marijuana cultivation facility that some people hope will uh, bring some new jobs and new life to that pr pretty dead community. Do these fires have something to do with people trying to acquire property, something to do with this marijuana thing? A lot of wild conspiracy theories circulating, but it is kind of weird series of arsons in Cotton Plant, Arkansas. The abortion hearing in federal court that we mentioned yesterday at Christine Baker's court about whether she'll continue to prevent the state from enforcing a law aimed at putting abortion clinics out of business in Arkansas by requiring uh, doctors with hospital admitting privileges to have a contract with the clinics uh, is going to take another day, so there was no decision on that yesterday. Some pretty good testimony about the ridiculousness of the state law, that there's not really any benefit to having this requirement. It's obviously intended to stop abortion pills from being distributed in Arkansas, but that's 
that's we knew that going in. What else? Well, I'd, if you want something to read, I'd modestly point you to the Arkansas blog, the Arkansas Times website, and read my column this week about dinner with Sarah Huckabee. Yes, I'd have served Sarah Huckabee and Mike Huckabee at the Red Hen in Lexington had I been there, but I wouldn't say I'd like it very much, but I would have served them. I have a little background in Lexington. I think I'd have preferred to eat a chili dog at the Estelle's Grill. They didn't have any locavore dining when I was up in that part of the world. And finally this. The Hogs managed to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory last night on a last out foul ball mishap, but they're going to be back tonight to play for the College Baseball National Championship and once again, woo pig and resist. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.